Hi guys, this is Dr. Nedavid Keys of Health. We're dealing with the COVID-19, which is now a pandemic. That's all we hear about, no matter where we go or who we talk to. Recently, I overheard a conversation uh, uh, discussing why not just kill off the virus. I thought this would be an interesting topic to discuss with you in this video. So let me start off by saying you cannot kill a virus. Why? Because they're not alive in the first place. Viruses are made up of genetic materials like DNA and are protected by a coating of protein. Viruses hijack the cells of living organisms. They inject their genetic material right into the cell and take over. They then use the cell to make more viruses and take over more cells. That's how they affect us. That's how they infect us. Viruses are not made out of cells. They can't keep themselves in a stable state. They don't grow and they can't make their own energy. Even though they definitely replicate and adapt to their environment, viruses are more like androids than real living organisms. So this brings us to the question, if a virus, if a virus isn't alive, does that affect how we deal with viral infections? Absolutely. Antibiotics, for example, are used to treat bacterial infections and are useless at dealing with a viral infection like a flu or chicken pox or shingles. Antibiotics uh, target certain parts of bacteria in the hopes of killing them. With viruses, it's hard to kill something that isn't quite alive to begin with. So instead of destroying the virus, antiviral med medicines, what they do is try to shut off the replication cycle like shutting down the, the Android production line. So when, a, so when a virus enters our body, it feeds off of our body's energy and multiplies. Our body doesn't necessarily kill it because it is not alive, but our body has the capability of shutting down the production of virus or its multiplication in our bodies. Sometimes, sometimes these viruses go into dormant state meaning it goes to sleep in our cells and can wake up later. A latent infection is an infection that is hidden, inactive or dormant, as opposed to active infections where a virus or bacterium is actively replicating and potentially causing symptoms. Uh, latent infections are essentially static. This is quite common in virus like herpes. Uh, herpes uh, lies dormant in our body until you are exhausted, overworked, stressed, uh, recovering from another illness or nutritionally deficient, and it wakes up and attacks. Another example of such virus is Epstein-Barr virus, which is actually a member of the herpes family and is one of the most common viruses in humans. Stress, uh, chemotherapy, and radiation uh, can reactivate this virus uh, even years after the person had first had the infection. Sometimes this reactivated virus doesn't even manifest in its full form. It might just cause severe fatigue in the body. You know that you're not well, but you can't place your finger on what is wrong with you. It might be a dormant virus just flexing its muscles. There are many other viruses which behave the same way. They lie low, sometimes for years, and then they are reactivated. But our body is amazing. It has the ability to build immunity against the virus, and the moment it starts to wake up, if the immune system is strong, it will fight it and force it to go back to the dormant state. What causes these viruses to get reactivated are things which weaken our immune system. And on top of the list is stress. After stress, then you have like uh, inflammation in the body. If you develop chronic inflammation, it eventually weakens the immune system severely and uh, all these dormant viruses begin to re get reactivated. Um, nutritional deficiencies is another big one. I've done a few videos on the topic of immune system. I tried to discuss a different approach with you, um, a different method, a different recipe, and different nutrients uh, uh, to, first and foremost, to make a point that there are so many options available. There are so many things that you can do to help your immune system and to help your body recover and to help your body fight off these viruses. 
However, there are some nutrients which are absolutely essential for your immune system. Without them, your immune system begins to go in a crisis mode. And that's when all these dormant infections start to recover. I'm going to share with you some of these key nutrients and how you can obtain them. First and foremost is vitamin D. Epstein-Barr virus and HIV virus survive in our body by blocking the vitamin D receptors. These viruses make your body have vitamin D deficiency in order to survive and thrive. Now think of the opposite. What happens if your body has sufficient amount of vitamin D? It will prevent this virus from multiplying. Vitamin D also reduces the risk of developing certain cancers, including cervical cancer. Vitamin D also reduces the risk of developing influenza and respiratory infections. Now, this is where it becomes very important when we talk about coronavirus. Coronavirus is a respiratory infection, and since vitamin D protects against resp respiratory infections, it effectively prepares your body to deal with coronavirus as well. You cannot get vitamin D from food only. You need the sun and the food. Foods that are rich in vitamin D include fatty fish, uh, eggs, cheese, mushrooms, and fortified cereals and drinks. Now, the next most important nutrient in this list is zinc. Zinc has an all-rounder effect on virus. It helps reduce the frequency of virus reactivation in the body. It reduces the duration if and when the virus gets reactivated. And it also lowers the severity of the symptoms. So even if the virus is reactivated, it will not, it will not last long and it won't be painful, too, pain, too painful. Foods that are high in zinc include legumes, whole grain, meat, uh, eggs, nuts, and seeds. The third nutrient uh, that I want to talk about is selenium. Selenium is a key nutrient in keeping the virus dormant in the body. Our body doesn't need large quantities of uh, selenium, but you will be surprised at how many people are actually deficient in this nutrient. The easiest source of selenium is fish, red and white meat, uh, cottage cheese, mushrooms, seeds, and lentils. Let's go back to COVID-19. It is a new virus and our bodies don't have immunity to it, but it is a coronavirus and we have seen coronaviruses before. If you don't have any underlying health conditions, you're managing your stress levels well, you're not nutritionally deficient, and you are strengthening your immune system by taking extra measures and giving it what it needs, there is no need to worry. You will be all right. You will be fine. Just do what is right for your immune system. Just do what is right for your body. Manage your stress levels and you will be okay. This is it for this video. I will see you next time. Please share the video with your friends and family. Please like the video. Please subscribe to my channel. I'll see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.